This video is about the prospect of a coming third world war. Um, let me start by explaining that uh, about 20 plus years ago, over two decades ago, I had an apocalyptic vision. It began by seeing a special report of a chemical scud attack in Israel um, on TV, it's just like any normal Joe you watch on TV and suddenly a special report pops up on this case, in this case it was NBC. And uh, uh, the report that aired indicated a Scud missile attack was underway on Israel and chemical agents were involved. Um, since this occurred during the Gulf War in 1991, in February 1991, it wasn't completely out of place. Uh, what was out of place was the next day, <coughs> or next hour or so, that I spent scanning through TV channels trying to find out more news, and CNN and all the news stations were just reporting, were just doing regular, regular TV. Um, and the next morning when I went and checked the news wires, there was nothing about a uh, chemical scud attack in Israel or even a false alarm of any sort. Um, about a week after that I was with a friend who was interested in ancient prophecies in Nostradamus. Um, at the time I was in college so I took uh, my friend John back to my dormitory room and gave him a couple books on ancient prophecy in Nostradamus uh, and then I started reading him a prophecy, I think, depicts a future nuclear war, which is the eighth chapter of the book of Revelation. And once I started reading it, the two of us, both of us, heard an air raid siren followed by the loud belled percussion of a nuclear explosion out the window, which was open at the time, uh, because in my dorm it was excessively hot, so we had opened the windows during the winter. Um, but we heard an air raid siren and a nuclear explosion, fled to the sub-basement of the uh, university library where I contacted the fire department, asked them if there had been any sirens or explosions, and they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. So, um, that apocalyptic vision uh, back in 1991 led me down a path uh, in terms of unraveling what I believe is a global deception by Russia, China, and the totalitarian powers of the East, where the uh, collapse of communism, the disbanding of the Soviet Union, was, intact, was in fact uh, an intentional ruse, it was a, a deception. Um, not that it didn't happen, it's just that the intent behind what happened is the opposite of what was perceived, that the collapse of Soviet Union communism was allowed to happen in order to instill a false sense of security in the West, minimize targetability in the East, and uh, set the stage for Moscow and Beijing to make friends with the West and, and engage in an era of waging false peace. By waging false peace, they've been able to get us to um, disband our nuclear weapons, effectively drop our guard, and in so doing we've opened the way for a surprise Third World War. Now, um, the apocalyptic vision I had occurred when I was in regular contact with um, Robert Prechter, who is the Elliott Wave theorist. And the Elliott Wave theory has to do with um, movements in stock prices, but more importantly, those the movements that are tracked in stock prices are a reflection of movements in mass mood or social mood. The um, idea behind the Elliott Wave principle is that stock prices uh, swing between highs and lows in, in 
connection with swings in mass emotion between optimism and pessimism. The nature of the, the cycles is such that there's small cycles, medium scale cycles, large cycles, grand cycles, etc. So there's cycles within cycles within cycles. I'm going to, a chart will be on here so you can see. And um, in, what that pattern is or represents in terms of five waves up and three waves down um, with cycles within cycles within cycles is a fractal pattern. And fractals um, uh, uh, have to do with non-linearity and um, uh, well it's basically cycles within cycles within cycles is the idea that the history unfolds according to a fractal based pattern this is consistent with what we're learning about the universe in terms of its expansion and development over time that it occurs um, with regard to scale I'll get back to that as we move on. Now, um, when I had my apocalyptic vision, uh, it was while I was w working with Robert Prechter, or not working with him, but communicating with him, and we were pondering the issue of uh, what's called the grand super cycle collapse. The reason this the reason for this notion of a grand super cycle collapse is um, the fractal based pattern of cycles within cycles within cycles indicates that we uh, should have been approaching back in 1991 and actually it's something that's occurred over the past couple dec decades a grand super cycle peak if not millennium peak in um, mass mood and mass emotion w effectively what this means is the peak of of uh, Western civilization, and um, uh, I'm going to put into the video the cycles within cycles within cycles with regard to scale, showing how we've worked up in these five wave patterns to a top, um, really, in 2013. The <coughs> implication of the grand super cycle peak is that. Uh, we're going to roll over into a major wave down with regard to historical scale that would involve a massive collapse in stock prices which in turn indicates a massive collapse in mass mood. What could beget that sort of collapse in uh, mass emotion? Uh, that's exactly what Prechter and I were pondering Back in 1991, when I had my apocalyptic vision, it began with a chemical, chemical scud attack in Israel and then heard an area siren and an explosion in connection with the eighth chapter from the book of Revelation. So, um, I believe what I had was not a hallucination, but a um, supernatural vision of what the cycles indicated that, it's, that eventually we're going to reach this this historic top, this peak of Western civilization, and when it reversed course, it would take the form of um, a surprise Third World War that would begin with a chemical scud attack in Israel, and then uh, this would be followed by um, global nuclear war. The uh, this is something I've been expecting for some 20 years. Um, now it just so happens in the past week what we've seen is um, the Dow has reversed from its all-time high and broke below the fifth psychologically important 15,000 mark uh, precisely in connection with um, Secretary, Secretary of State John Kerry making a rather bellicose speech regarding military action against Syria because of Syria's uh, August 21st um, gas attack on uh, opposition forces in the outskirts of Damascus. The um, reason the reversing from 15,000 is relevant is because I've noticed um, a pattern where when the Dow Jones 
industrial average reverses from psychologically important thousand levels that are focus of attention of investors. Um, this ten often coincides with uh, major drops in, in equity prices, and those drops can occur because of geopolitical crises, not because of something that should uh, sh you would think would be having to do with the economy or financial markets, but because of uh, geopolitical shocks. A um, couple examples of that would be in 1973 when the Dow Jones Industrial Average reversed from the uh, magic thousand barrier. It coincided precisely with uh, the Yom Kippur Arab-Israeli War in 1973, and what happened was a drop eventually in the market of uh, some 40 percent and with the worst recession uh, up at that point since the uh, Great Depression. In 1990, Dow Jones Industrial Average went up and peaked at the 3,000 mark. Um, it closed at 2,999.75 two days in a row and on July 16th and 17th of 1990 and then reverse course into a 25% uh, drop that was caused caused by Iraq's invasion of Kuwait and uh, the subsequent Persian Gulf crisis. And another example of this was when 9-11 um, occurred. In, on September 6 of 2001, the Dow Jones Industrial Average broke decisively below the psychologically important 10,000 mark, and then on September 11th, the terrorist attacks occurred. Uh, the stock market fell 20%. And so what I'm saying is that these Elliott Wave cycles in stock prices and mass mood are actually cycles of history that history unfolds according to some sort of fractal-based pattern. And the stock market is simply a barometer of the mass emotional response to history as it unfolds. Uh, in that sense, I think what's important to understand is history is um, pre-written. 